So December 17th. Um, this is our last meeting for 2023. And uh, we will we start with this meditation by Suzanne Wilson. So let's close our eyes, relax our body. Invite, but already knowing that our mentors, the spirit guides of this study and the, the spirits of life, they are here with us. So let's keep our focus on, on these uh, high spirits and uh, just relax the body and let's listen to the meditation. Sit upright in a chair, both feet on the floor. Yoga students may prefer the half lotus position, or you may need to lie down with a pillow under your knees to support your back. Let your hands rest in your lap, palms facing up. Close your eyes and mouth and breathe gently through your nose. With each inhale, visualize white light entering your body. And as you exhale, let all your breath out slowly, breathing in white light and breathing out all stress, anxiety, letting it go. Simply be in the now, the present, this very moment. Divine Source, thank you for blessing me with this day, with my life and all my many blessings. Thank you for giving me another day to be of service in this life and in this body. I ask that you cleanse me in divine white light, erasing all energy that does not belong in my auric field. Surround me in a beautiful, translucent, golden bubble of protection that is bathed in your divine white light, sealing in all my positive energies and good health, sealing out all negative energies, all ill health, all entities from lower realms, and I send white light to the lower realms, so that only peace, love, and protection may enter in. I give gratitude for my spiritual team, spirit guides, angels, and my loved ones in the light. I send this light out to each of my loved ones on both the physical plane and the spiritual plane. I send this light out to all those in need of a physical, emotional, or spiritual healing. I connect with universal consciousness. I connect with all beings who are in meditation at this moment. I am eternal. I am one with divine source. I am one with all. Compassion guides all my thoughts, words, actions, 
actions and I trust that I will complete my greater work before I transition to heavenly home with gratitude and joy I am a child of God and so it is Um, last time when we uh, when we met before the last Saturday, um, I guess somebody made a comment about the hierarchy of the spirits and uh, how we do evolve. I don't remember exactly the the comment and who made the comment or the questions, but then I thought about bringing these. Um, this is slide that we shared um, uh, in the encounter that we had over here in Houston uh, for the mechanics of mediumship when we were uh, covering this very topic. And uh, we were uh, uh, mentioning that um, once created, the spirits can the spirit can be, you know, uh, can travel through any any journey and we know we all know we have the free will etc but there are uh, a lot of steps and lessons and the uh, level of degree for our development and uh this is not by no mean uh uh precise isn't it, it it is not meant to be precise but just give to give us an idea of uh the the hierarchy of the spirit so um in the reference books that we use for andre luis chico xavier books uh and also alan kardec they 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 mentioned <clears throat> at least three degrees of the spirits right so the pure spirits the good spirits the imperfect spirits and uh and the and the this subdivision is or the, those three categories is based on the following criteria. For the third degree, the imperfect spirits, the matter prevails over the spirit. So we are so attached to the to matter to the physical plane, and uh, we cannot and uh, we do not have means to. Um, imagine or to entertain any odd idea but the reality of here and now and then as we evolve as we learn a little bit more then we uh start um becoming more and more uh spiritualistic if you will so we become more um aware of the reality of the spirit so then the spirit starts prevailing over matter. <clears throat> so we gain the ability to do good. Sometimes we, do, we are not doing the good, but uh, we have the ability because now we have a little bit more comprehension. And then we move to the status when, when we want to do good. I guess the majority of the... I want to believe the majority of the humanity or at least uh, uh, plan to do good or, you know, have this desire at some level, right? And uh, and once we, we start applying good and as we go, as we do more and more, then we... Uh, uh, we, we, we gain this status of all goodness. So it's, 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 it's beyond uh, this physical reality or, you know. And I just put it over here just so we compare. We can compare. It's like whenever we are created, it's like a, this brute, raw diamond. No, uh, 
no work or this is as raw uh, it can be and then uh we all will be or the the the, the idea is to uh, achieve this 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 status over here at the peer uh and very uh, uh, uh pretty type of diamond um and then uh i also um uh, 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 found this um uh, a reference over here uh and this is from um the if i'm not mistaken this is from the book uh between uh heaven and earth and also um evolution uh between two worlds both books from chico xavier so uh i tried to translate uh some of uh the, the, the references that they, they, they bring in the this is this is very much the 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 path that we we we, we go as we uh evolve to let's say angelical uh status so once we are created we are simple we are ignorant and um and then instinct will prevail right uh evidently we all know that we 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 transition through uh mineral uh, to through plants uh uh animal and uh vegetable kingdom but uh as we uh become animal then uh instinct will prevail and um little by little we um we move or we transition from instinct to intelligence and to intelligence and uh, from intelligence to reason so we become more rational uh we have more responsibilities as human beings and uh and then but still this is not enough for us to become or to be a human being it's necessary for us to uh, evolve or develop discernment and understand what sublimation does or what it means to us. So that's how we 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 uh we become or we we achieve the status of evolved humans. So in the book they say uh I guess this is the book between uh the two words from Chico Xavier uh he mentioned two-thirds of human creatures incarnated in the earth crust linger on an evolutionary journey from irrationality to intelligence or intelligence to reason the remaining third is in trans transit from reason to humanity outside the terrestrial body but connected to the same plane billions of thinking beings evolve under the same conditions so this is not this doesn't apply only to us but every all, all the beings around this orb and uh that's what i would like to to bring if anybody want to uh to uh make any comment louise or if there is anything else that comes to mind just feel free to comment. No? All righty. No, oh, of course I've got a comment. <laughs> <laughs> Good. As I put in the chat, um, it appears that humans need one million years incarnated as a human, mm -hmm. give or take. That is, however, if they do nothing whatever to slow it down or speed it up. I said of instead of or, um, meaning that we can speed it up because we have free will. And of course, we can slow it down because if we do some very selfish and unpleasant incarnations in a row, mm -hmm. that is then going to require atonement at some point which yeah. is going to slow down the whole process and then speeding it up is of course paying attention to people like anna castro 
<laughs> I wish. And Luis Marotta, yes, because you speak only in gentle spiritual beauty. And that, of course, is, uh, it means that we're uh, all who are here are at least, um, in my opinion, halfway through our incarnations or better, mm -hmm. because otherwise we wouldn't be paying attention. We would be watching porn movies or doing whatever yeah. it is that people yeah. do when they're not that developed. Yeah. So uh, it's always um, an interesting concept. Who are you talking to? If mm -hmm. you're talking to people who have not had that many incarnations, then it's a punishment to talk about spirit mm -hmm. and and um, higher levels. Yeah. Whereas people who have had many incarnations um, have some understanding. Um, sorry, that was a longer speech than I intended. Um, and no, no, Luis, but... of course, I would love to hear a real psychic talk instead of nonsense from my mouth. <laughs> Very well said, Giles. Yeah. We, uh, I guess we are all in that situation and transitioning from reason to humanity. And uh, I, uh, I used to say and talk to my friends that uh, we probably in the past lives, not too, too, um, not um, too many years ago, we probably were doing things not so nice. And that's why we are all <laughs> trying to understand and learn something. And um, as a matter of fact, I used to say to my mother that this time uh, I want to, to graduate. I want to, I, I don't want to, you know, stay in the school. I don't want to be in the school forever. I want to graduate. And uh, I didn't know exactly what I was talking about, but uh, I guess today I do. <laughs> Probably I, yeah, we, uh, I, I was not that nice before, I guess. Um, all right, so um, like we mentioned uh, earlier, today is the last meeting for 2023 year, uh, for the year of 2023. Um, so we'll be off from 24th until the 14th, and then we'll be back on January the 21st with uh, the Spirits book. But in the meantime, I will, um, if, if I, I, I have the chance I'll be working with uh, Dr. Desu on uh, the translation of his uh, next video about the uh, pineal, pineal gland, the one of the responsible ones for uh, the mediumship. Um, and uh, last time we stopped at this uh, question, law of destruction, question number four. 755, why do we sometimes find individuals as cruel as savages in the most advanced societies? In the answer from the spirits, just as you may find rotten fruit on a tree that is flourishing with healthy fruit, they are wolves in the sheep's clothing wearing the cloak of civilization. Low spirits may incarnate among more advanced human beings in the hope of advancing themselves. However, if the trial is too difficult, their rudimentary nature prevails, like we just saw in the evolution of the spirits. Um, and as a matter of fact, I, I think I mentioned this last time, but uh, I was reading a book uh, talking about uh, transition of Earth to um, the regeneration world. And um, the spirit who dictated the book uh, mentioned all this, these uh, things that we, we see and uh, sometimes it does still surprise us, the, the violence, the you know, the brutality or the cruelty. It's, it's hard to believe that we have still human beings doing all of that, but the spirit was kind of uh, 
telling us that this is actually natural because as we transition from um, uh, to, to regeneration world, what happens is that all those lower realms, they are being empty. So we cannot evolve or the planet Earth cannot move on to this new regeneration while we still have uh, so many lower realms around us. I mean, talking from the spiritual uh, aspect. And, uh, and as such, the only way to clean those or to empty those lower realms is to incarnate all those spirits on earth and give them the, the, uh, uh, one more chance to, you know, uh, try once more and see if they are willing to um, evolve, learn their lessons, lesson and evolve this time. Or if they are not willing to, then uh, this is going to be their last incarnation in this planet. And then they will be invited to move to another one more adequate to their uh, development. But in the meantime, the spirituality is uh, cleaning and cleansing those uh, realms. So the the vibration, the energy, the frequency of this planet will uh, become more adequate to the next uh, stage of the planet evolution. Uh, and it does make to total sense to me. So um, if we go to the next question, then uh, seven, five, six, will a society of good people one day be purged of sinners and criminals? Will a society of good people one day be purged of sinners and criminals? Yes, Una, please. I think that kind of the question follows on from what you were just talking about, Anna, and it's, I've heard it being discussed on other forums as well. Mm -hmm. The idea that if we do move to a higher level of consciousness or a higher dimension, like to the fourth dimension or the fifth dimension, um, that everything would be all light. But this is a planet of duality and we're here to learn through duality. So will all will negativity be permanently, permanently eliminated? I don't believe so, because it's a planet of duality. There has to be some aspect of challenge otherwise the incarnation is too easy or something like that mm -hmm. una i quite agree with you <clears throat> i mean that's that's me just agreeing i just from things that i've read i'm uh no not pretending to be having psychic knowledge here but uh it strikes me that the um as i just put in the chat the challenges that are available on earth according to what i've read allow you to increase the size of the gem that is your spirit while in the afterlife you can basically only polish the facets of it you cannot make it bigger because there are no challenges um, or rather you can make it bigger but it sure takes a long time um, mm -hmm. it's because there's no absolutes in any of this and, and one size mm -hmm. does not fit all as i keep repeating mm -hmm. anyway there it is yeah, so that... yes sooner yeah, I totally agree as well. Um, and and to, to, to Giles' point, um, I was thinking, okay, so how to uh, learn not to be uh, a, a vanished people or uh, how to, to, to make sure that ambition is no longer a problem for you if if you're not in this physical world, if you're not incarnated, so it's going to be too easy just to, you know, um, be as a, live as a spirit and uh, just be among people, you know, mm -hmm. of the same level as you, but yeah. If there was no duality here, then there's no challenge yep. to the soul uh, and come in here. So how would uh, we evolve? Yeah, I, I, much as I, I would like an, an earth where there's, you know, where it's an easy ride, but I don't think uh, that's, that's on the cards. 
Yeah, uh, although I must say, uh, uh, before Luis comes, uh, I must say we, we need, uh, there is a, a dosage or ideal uh, uh, dose for that, right? So you, on the other hand, you cannot really evolve uh, more if you are in a, in a world where most of those those habitants if they are just like savages and uh, you know cruel people so what 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 is in there for you to learn if you have passed through that right level Luis please yes I totally agree disputes usually say that the contrasting world where we live in is directly associated with the idea of our inferiority the more inferior the spirits are, the more contrasting environment they have to live in to give value to the other side. But when you get evolved, these contrasting things, they don't need to be so contrasting anymore because you've already learned the value of the light, for example. So you don't need so much darkness. And of course, other challenges will be waiting for us when we reach other higher levels of evolution. Mm -hmm. So you agree with that too. Yeah. And, and the challenges also become <clears throat> like uh, for the highest spirits to, to teach people like us, hard-minded people. <laughs> yeah, kind of this. Yeah, and the, and the like um, um, Alon Kardec's books and also Chico's Xavier books uh, mentioned, you know, the higher spirits evolution is very uh, connected to our own evolution. So as they help us to evolve, they also um, uh, evolve and, uh, right? Uh, yeah. yeah, for example, nowadays, right? Uh, man has conquered a lot of things in terms of uh, technology. So the challenges of uh, the soul are becoming very apparent, conspicuous. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, you have a lot of civilization and then people are bumping into the problem of having a soul, having an objective. Yeah. And what is the, the, the meaning of life? Because now food can be easily, or at least for some, more easily found, uh, transportation, health. What next? Right, so other challenges are at the door for us to face. So this is a, what will happen to us when we grow older in spirits, right? Alan Kadek says something very interesting at the, in the gospel according to spiritism. He says, of course, in a nutshell, I'm saying here, he says that if we are very young uh, spirits, right? Reincarnation is a blessing, just a blessing and very much, right? But if you are older in spirit, reincarnation begins various side effects, mm -hmm. a lot of anguish, a lot of, and I think many people in humanity, as humanity grows older, is going through this situation. It's a dangerous situation because the person in this kind of search can get into drugs, can get in because uh, the person doesn't find the nourishment they usually found in the past when they were younger. So if they just live in this physical world looking for physical things, they won't find what they need. So they would make search for very dangerous things too, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why now we have on earth this kind of knowledge we've been studying for those who are really searching honestly and may find, okay. Okay, yeah. Laura, Gloria. I would like to say more about um what you just mentioned um that that as we evolve it helps them to evolve i haven't heard that before yeah uh so so let's let's uh let me give you a uh let let let's try an analogy as a parent don't you think you did learn a lot and evolve? True. <clears throat> it's just it's, it's a it was a difficult concept. I think of 
evolved souls as so much better able to cope. And, and here I feel like I'm flopping around struggling on this level and I'm trying to, and I hear what you're saying. It's just, um, it's a new information to me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so, uh, and, and also like, for example, how, how do we know we are, uh, becoming more spiritual and less of this you know attached to the physical reality so for example to me it was kind of shocking when I realized that so for example I have a habit if if I'm visiting someone if I'm going to a a friend's house for the first time or something then I have something in my hand you know my hands like you know like any other the person does right uh but um then i realized why am i always looking for something physical you know like a, I, don't, I don't know a gift or something when in reality i know that the best gift i can uh, bring to that person is a prayer or is a good vibration so 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 then I realized okay that's so interesting you know how attached we still are to the physical world even though we know the concept but we do not know yet how to apply and I guess from a high spirit perspective is applying is still learning the applying they know they uh in terms of uh modal values and behavior etc cetera, etc cetera. but again applying applying and uh, and also from the 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 perspective of uh, uh tolerance patience resilience and love because it's so hard to love someone you were teaching that person you're happy uh, helping that person and the person is still um uh not getting or grasping the the idea you know it's still not moving on sometimes you get angry right so well, come on guys move it and and that person well i, I guess that's how my way to interpret that information. Thank you. Debbie, please. Oh, I'm sorry I was late. But uh, <clears throat> when you were talking about, you know, bringing something physical to visit someone, I, I just made me think, look at us. We're in these physical bodies, everything around us is like that we have to um to relate to each other we have to relate to the physicality of this world and and the other thing i was thinking of you know being a parent i feel like when you know before i became a parent when my kids were young i thought that i was supposed to teach them everything and now I see they have taught me so much more than I ever could teach them. See? <laughs> I just thought I'd mention that. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's that's the beauty, right, of parenthood. But um, the uh, when you mention, okay, so here we are dealing with all this physicality, and uh, but yet learning how to be more spiritual that's the uh, again the beauty of this education and uh, like Luna mentioned is the duality you know so here we are physical beings I mean not physical beings but living in in a physical body trying to learn all the spirituality around us so that's that's a very one of the biggest duality that we have to face but you know yeah anything else any other comment before we well yeah there's one other one other comment which is worth mentioning that the people who achieve positions of power Mm -hmm. and then 
behave very badly and cause himself immense grief with this, not to mention many other people damaged with it. Um, these are people who've chosen an incarnation which they want good things for themselves, millions of dollars, positions of power, but then they become unbalanced and can't handle it. So they've been too greedy in their planning of their incarnation. Mm -hmm. And since we have free will, well, maybe their guides are saying, no, I don't, don't, don't do that. You'll, <laughs> you'll, you'll make a mess of it. And they say, no, I won't. I can, I can handle it and mm -hmm. so on. And then of course they can't. So I don't think, um, I think the Kardec statement about uh, spirits of low degree and very backward. No, it's people just being ambitious and yeah. being beyond their capabilities. Um, <clears throat> yeah, there's a few, a good few examples around yeah. everywhere we look. Sorry, it's Annie's turn. Thank you. Thank you, Giles. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, they say, you know, one of the biggest challenges is really wellness. So wellness, uh, you know, uh, being very rich or uh, be uh, too intelligent or, you know, those are not easy uh, tasks. Those are not easy challenges by no means. It's so Or power. It's so easy to get distracted and, and fail. Any, please. I just have a question and it, it might not exactly be what we're on, but it, it's sort of sort of on it. But I'm asking because I'm not going to see everybody until um, January, whatever it is, and that's a long time. So I just want to know the answer to this question. Um, so my question is, um, why do some people that are here on Earth think that uh, when they go to the other side, they're going to be um, really, really important. And I'm not talking about um, someone that's a, a like holy person like Mother mm -hmm. Teresa or, you know, um, a, just a, a regular person that has an idea that they are going to be like really, really important when they get to the other side. Why do they think that? And, and what really happens when they get to the other side? Louise, do you, <laughs> I think you are very... I have a simple answer to that and mm -hmm. Luis will have a better answer, so I'll keep mine short. <laughs> No, go on, go ahead. You will Anja. surround when you arrive at the other side, you will surround yourself with people just like you. Because that's what you want. This is what you desire. So if you think you're very important, you'll surround yourself with self-important people and you will not have a good time. And it will take you a while to realize that, <laughs> that this is not the right attitude. That was it. Yes, I think this is something very very relative because there are spirits that were powerful here in the world and uh, when they went to the other side they were very they become very rebellious because on on if on the one hand they were powerful here they had been powerful here on the other hand the other side they were in very bad places but mm -hmm. they were still powerful because they were intelligent and they could uh, control other people under their Authorities, Influence, yeah, and these are what are called the dark, dark leaders yep. of spirituality of the other side. You know, um, so there are lots of things that we can learn, and many, many other people that are common people that they go there. As I, I was reading once, for example, a book by by this cool group by Robin Foy, and in the book he said that once he went to a, a circle with uh, a Leslie Flint to validate one, uh, one communication he had in his own group. Uh, the communication was by uh, Winston Churchill. And uh, the spirit guide called Mickey came through and said, well, many people get out of the world on the red carpet, but comes into this world 
from the back door. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, nice. it's a, we we are in a very delusional uh, uh, place, right? We need to be careful about that, indeed. Uh, Una, <clears throat> thank you, Luis. I th there is there is something that you like when you pass from this world, you go to wherever whatever level you vibrate at. So if your vibrations are quite low or uh, very materialistic or whatever, then that's the realm you go to. And also that you see what you think you're going to see. So um, Anthony Borges book talks about um, whole churches full of like Presbyterians and Catholics and all the rest of it, you know, still practicing their, their religion and stuff. So mm -hmm. I think if you think that you're going to be really powerful, but your vibration is low, then you probably end up similarly to where, what Giles was describing. You see yeah. what, what you expect to see and your vibration dictates what level of the, of the astral life or the astral plane you go to. That's my understanding of it. Very well said, yeah. I totally agree with that because uh, as a matter of fact, some of the... And uh, some of the medium mystic meetings, uh, um, a friend of mine in, in Rio, in her spiritual center, she was um, uh, talking about this guy that was a Jewish. And um, it was funny because, you know, going to, there was this, uh, there was this spirit talking in the medium mystic meeting, but then he was talking about attending, still attending to, Jewish uh, practice and going to uh, you know whatever he was practicing over, over here on earth so nothing wrong it's just they are they are, uh, uh, believe in the stage mm -hmm. right so I, I I agree with Una yeah thank you uh Gloria please I want to answer that question that Annie had um from the perspective of how I heard the question, mm -hmm. there are people I interact with here who call themselves Christians, who uh, believe that although they're not powerful here, they're gonna be very powerful there because of what their religions tell mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. And some examples of that are a special versions of very, very edited uh, verses from the Bible were um, slaves in the South were allowed to have, and it was all the verses that said, you must obey your master. And they were allowed to hear messages from their religions that said, be a good slave in this life and you will be rewarded to sit on a throne with Jesus when you cross over kind of a message. Mm -hmm. And in many churches, that's still a message. It's not that extreme as was done to the slaves. The, the lies that were told to the slaves to manipulate them. But um, as a little girl, I remember I went to a, a small rural church uh, for Sunday school on Sunday and, and they'd always call people up to be saved. And I was just curious. I was probably about eight years old. And I went up one Sunday and it was a, a bunch of older white men. And here I was this little girl and when they sent the kids home on the bus, they kept me because I had said I wanted to be saved and I was terrified. And they said that if I had died um, in church that morning before I was saved, I would have gone right to hell and I would have burned. But because I came up to be saved, I would, you know, and again, I would be this wonderful whatever on the other side. And the whole experience was just really traumatic. Another example of that is the religions, um, 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 some of the, um, I'm not sure, I'm losing my words here, How, some of the Arab religions where if they'll die for Allah, they'll get to have 20 virgins or something. Mm -hmm. yep. Those, these are examples that I was thinking of when Annie asked the question. In other words, we're, we're fed these stories as humans and a lot of it is to promote materialism. It really is yeah. Yeah. If you're giving it to their church or their yeah. whatever. And you're, so you're promised that if you give it all to them um, and, and live 
uh, like they tell you to, then you'll be richly rewarded and incredibly powerful on the other side. And it's uh, it's sad because so many people um, buy into that and they don't think for themselves, they don't educate themselves and or they're not allowed to, as was the case with the slaves. Um, and it's um, it's misinformation mm -hmm. that is um, what I want to say. Uh, it's propaganda by religions, organized yeah. religions. Yeah. And, and at the end of the day, those are the ones that become the rebellions that Louise was talking about. And you know, as soon as they realize, OK, so this was not what it was meant to be, it was not the way that I, I've been told. So they become the rebellions. Annie, please. Thank you. Very, very nice, Lori. Um, those were all really great responses. Um, if, if a person that is here on earth that claims that they're a spiritual person, they're not in an organized religion, they, they, you know, they are a spiritual person, um, but they think that they're going to be like a really, really important person on the other side is, would you call that person a wolf in sheep's clothing? Is that, would that, would that be, is that, cause they're like a wolf mm. in sheep's clothing is, is, is like a, a bad guy pretending to be a good guy. Mm -hmm. is that yeah. right yeah so that's the way that i interpret you know in the in a sense the person didn't actually uh understand the idea right so does not know how to apply does not understand and um does not really give like gloria was saying they do not really think because you know if you think about it, you will see all where the conflicts are, right? So, uh, I mean, come on, think about 20 virgins or whatever on the other side. <laughs> Just, but anyway, Luis. Yes, and uh, that's comment. why it's so important what we've been studying here or mm -hmm. and elsewhere in the world that uh, make make it clear for humanity that things are not exactly the way they have been taught all over these hundreds of years, right? Mm -hmm. Because, and that's why there's lots of resistance to this kind of knowledge we are tackling here. Lots of resistance, even between some people who call themselves, for example, spiritualists or spiritists. I'll tell you one example. Once I was giving a, a study in a spiritist center and inside the, within the, the, the venture, there was a very prominent spiritist woman, and she was not prominent as a spiritist, but she was a prominent as a, a lawyer, a professor at university, very well known in this town here. And when I said something, she was so outraged when I said that. I said something citing Alan Kardec and the book of Emmanuel, uh, she was a spiritual guy who said that intelligence, wealth, uh, beauty, everything is a kind of loan that can be removed from you yeah. in order to make you develop as a spirit. Yeah. Oh, she didn't accept that at all. She said, no, if I am at this position here now, this reincarnation, I can only conceive that the next incarnation will be better. So if today I am uh, a judge, tomorrow I'll be the president of this country, for example, I can only evolve, right? And she was so, she was very outraged. It was a kind of rumor, right? You know, I had to, you know, to put out the fire with some very, uh, how can I say, smart ways of being because otherwise, thing was, and that's way, that's the problem. Reincarnation is really badly accepted even between this kind of people. Mm -hmm. Because when you have the intention of, I am going to be the most important person, you, I think you're doing exactly on the contrary of right, being an evolved person, because the intention must not be that. Even Jesus Christ said, be like me, I'm meek, I'm humble. Mm -hmm. 
imagine something so beautiful the most one of the most powerful entities on the on this planet say ah, is it my, is, he was more humble than us right? yeah. <laughs> it's very beautiful that's why people many people felt when they got together with uh Chico Xavier it was so powerful with a mediumship that had unbelievably seen mm -hmm. and suddenly the guy was humble he was so humble and so you know helpful that many people even didn't believe that he had so much power in terms of uh, mediumship and things like that in, in his ball yeah, he was really humble not <clears throat> not faking not fake yes oh, yeah yes. because he really faith, yeah. 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 Uh, for like he understood yeah he that's understood why jesus christ said, i'm sorry no no go ahead Liz. and that, that's why jesus christ uh, was always putting his finger at the religious people like the pharisees all mm -hmm. the time hypocrites you give an idea to the people that you uh, of your inner side that you don't have are full of the junk inside of you your heart bad intentions mm -hmm. but we know that the pharisees they usually dressed very well with very sumptuous pieces of clothing right so things like that to impress people around religiously just like today we things haven't changed so much yeah, yeah. Uh, and that was about to say louise that um perhaps that mediumship was given to chico xavier because by then his spirit did understand that um all the power he had was given to him so he could be of service and not prevail yes. over other people or to show up or, or something like this but yes I do agree and this is such an important point before una starts again is that many even spiritualist people they they are they go against mediumship because they say mediumship brings power and power brings pride mm -hmm. and that's why we link in spiritism mediumship to the ethics of the gospel mm -hmm. Otherwise, yeah. it can really bring lots of pride and can be, you know, Detrimental a, a fall, right? Mm -hmm. A downfall for the medium. And this is no doubt happens, right? Yeah, yeah. it's because mediumship doesn't mean being spiritual. Yeah. yeah in mediumship, it's just a, a tool. A, a like tool. Yeah, it's a tool. And, and uh, being proud, it's human value. It's being yes. attached to the earth, not being the spirituals, the from the high spirits uh, they don't have these values we have here and when we are proud it's because we're not really spiritual yeah it's spiritual yeah. for sure yeah. yeah yeah spirit doesn't prevail yet over matter still and uh as a matter of fact um uh, chico xavier used to say about his mediumship he used to say this that he was just a postman so and and in fact that's all that he was. He didn't know all the things, all the wisdom that he was, you know, writing or speaking. He was just a postman. So it's it's very very nice. Ah, uh, Una. Coming back to your question, Annie, um, the wolf in sheep's clothing. Yeah, quite possibly. I question how deep the that person's spirituality really is maybe um or their their level of understanding of of spiritual law and the purpose of incarnation and life between life planning and that kind of thing i would wonder about their understanding of those things because mm -hmm. if you do have an understanding of, of those things i think you would be less likely to think that you'll be very powerful on the other side that would be my suspicion anyway. I think it's worth mentioning um, briefly that um, there are um, churches and temples on the other side which uh, have a uh, hundred or a thousand people in them and they sit there forever going, ha, 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 oh, praise God. And they're perfectly good people, but they're... Um, or in, in the cases that I've read about, they're perfectly good people. But you go in there as a social worker and you say, look, this is rubbish. And then they throw you out of there immediately because they don't get it. 
and and they go on. Where? What do you mean? We're not dead. We're uh, we're waiting for for our prophet to arrive, or whatever their their religious affiliation is, and that these um, services can go on, of course, because they don't need to eat, drink, or defecate, so they can go on for a thousand years. And every now and again, somebody finally wakes up and and sees the social worker and says, "Okay, I'm out of here." <laughs> but mm -hmm. The game goes on with all the others. So this is um, oh the ra oh yes the rapture is supposed to arrive right, which it never does, of course. Um, <laughs> sorry, I just wanted to mention that because among all the other tricks and and surprises waiting for us in the afterlife, there's one of them. Mm -hmm. Don't get fooled by that. And the same, presumably, the spiritual churches, which uh, which are in uh, fallen into the same. Uh, category yeah very nice Giles thank Luis please oh there is a book that um, it was a kind of denunciation a report about how the situations of these spirits that are very powerful and how they lead in the lower zones right and it's by Chico Xavier it's a very shocking book it was the most difficult book Chico had ever uh, psychographed, right? Mm -hmm. Because it was a denunciation, a report about how the dark side works on the other side under the authority of those oh, those people. One of the and the and the great quote unquote spirit that was involved in the story was the Pope Gregory, right? One, I think, in my opinion, according to my uh, humble historic studies was, uh, I think, Gregory the Seventh, I guess, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and uh, from the uh, the convent of Cluny in France, I think, mm -hmm. yes. And uh, this story, of course, this is a, <clears throat> a side uh, comment that I'm making here. If you want, uh, I will put the link here in, on, my, on Amazon is $2, $3, the, the Kindle, <clears throat> the Kindle, remember, mm -hmm. you can use version. Kindle. Mm -hmm. Yes, Kindle version. It's right here, right? And uh, it's so interesting and you will understand and we know how things happened. And, and when, when we would deal with uh, spirit release meetings, uh, we find this kind of, um, okay, set up uh, from the uh, spirit side, very common, unfortunately, but it's very good for us to, to have a look, right? <clears throat> there we go. Very nice. Oh, liberation. Yeah. Thank you, Luis. Okay, so since you were the last one, would you please read the answer for us? Okay. So 756, will a society of good people one day be purged of sinners and criminals? The human race is progressing. Those who are under the power of wrongdoing and who are out of place among good people will gradually disappear. Just as defective grains are separated from the good when wheat is threshed. These spirits are reborn into another body and as they acquire more experience, they will arrive at a clearer understanding of good and evil. You have an example of this in the plants and animals that the human race has found a way to improve and in which it develops new qualities. It is only after several generations that the improvement becomes complete. This is the perfect metaphor of the different lives of each human being. Yep. There it is. Okay, so uh, now we are... Uh... Moving to another topic for law of destruction, which is about dueling. And uh, remember, this book was written in 1854. So back then, it was still a practice. So that's why it is over here. But as we, we read the, this, this uh, topic, let's think about 
all the modern ways, we still do this, you know, we do not do the same way as we used to, like 200 years ago or so, but um, we are still doing some dwelling uh, uh, as we, uh, you know, uh, work, you know, we go to the office in a work environment or, you know, um, as in family, in our relationship with so many other people. Uh, Giles? Uh, I just wanted to say something encouraging here. Um, the um, We know we have many um, exceedingly, disgustingly rich people on this planet who are hogging um, wealth. Mm -hmm. to the detriment of the poor people. And I wanted to say something encouraging about it is that none of these people can sleep at night <laughs> because they cannot trust their servants, they cannot trust their friends, they cannot trust anybody. And they know the other billionaires are out to get them. <laughs> and that may not be true in all of the cases, but I'm sure it's true often enough to give us comfort that this wealth does not help you at all. And a short, a short story of uh, Jürgen Ziva visiting uh, himself in a previous incarnation. So he goes to this mansion and, and finds, uh, finds him looking at a stately bedroom with, with uh, a body lying in the bed, which is alive just. And he realizes that it's him in a previous incarnation who's become very wealthy. He's been Scrooge in a previous incarnation. Mm. And since the servants know he's dying, they're all stealing everything they can lift and not paying attention to him anymore. And he's dying alone. And uh, he, this was a very unpleasant experience for him. Mm -hmm. um, and looking at the, uh, well, anyway, I just wanted to make some uh, encouraging remarks. Sorry <laughs> not to get gloomy about this. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, very, very nice. Thank you. Please. Well, uh, I remember once reading a book by, it's called Heaven and Hell by Alan mm -hmm. Kardec. And it was a spirit coming through uh, in the society, the Spiritist Society of Paris. And uh, the spirit said that it was a woman, that she had been prepared for the challenge of a rich reincarnation for four reincarnations, she had uh, bared or bore, born uh, a reincarnation as a very poor person to get ready to be rich, to be rich. and not to fail. <laughs> and that's, and she said she didn't fail because she had had uh, various previous reincarnation in the poverty and she was very kind of skilled to mm -hmm. face the situation of being rich and not fail as a spirit right so that's it yeah yeah very nice uh, yeah. very good i remember that <laughs> it is it is interesting okay so uh 757 can dwelling be classified as legitimate self-defense any comment before we go to the answer. Are they saying dueling? Like fighting dueling? Is that fighting, correct? yes, dueling. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um so and the answer naturally, no, it is murder in a ridiculous practice worthy of barbarians. When civilization is more advanced and more moral people will see that dueling is as ridiculous as the fights that were once regarded as being God's judgment. But I, I, I would say we no longer do this as we used to in the past, but um, we still have some modern ways <laughs> to do the same and do some justice. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Gladia, please. Yeah, we still have our ways. It, um, I mostly, when I was, my career in academia, it was mostly in science and engineering. And um, 
there were duels among the faculty who got the most lab space, who got uh -huh. <laughs> office. Um, and I'm sure it's that way in corporations too. Who gets that corner office? Um, mm -hmm. Who gets this company car? And, and they had actually sabotage each other in order to win. So mm -hmm. to me, that's a form of dueling. It's how you try to destroy another person for for your own gain. Mm -hmm. And yep. yes, it's ridiculous. And I, and it was, I'm sorry, it was always men. <laughs> and they would not cooperate with each other. And um, it made for me to have a nice career because they trusted me, but they didn't trust each other. <laughs> well, yeah, good for you. <laughs> Thank you, Gloria, very nice. Luis. Well, Gloria, I, I agree with you. Academia is a very, because as a teacher, I, I taught many people from academia and many of them got really sick and I could uh, probe their psychic atmosphere and there were people wanting their space, you understand? And I could see this very clearly and I said, my goodness, and what's happening to you? Oh, I don't know. I'm getting sick all the time. I'm... And then uh, if you searched and searched, you could see there was competition from the academia. Mm. I think it's a very dangerous place because pride and, you know, was at their most right, in terms of uh, competitivity and things like that. It was incredible uh, how many people got sick, how many people got problems in their lives because of this dueling, intellectual dueling, the, the search for brilliantism and things like that. Yep. It was crazy. Yep. Vanity. Thank you, Luis. Uh, Gloria, is, <laughs> you want to say something? No? Oh, Debbie, please. Well, I just wanted to say that um, when I was working, I worked mostly with women and I worked in a medical lab. And it was the same experience as Gloria was talking about among the men. They were like, it was so, so um, competitive, like trying to get time off or uh, taking credit, one person taking credit for what another one did. The most famous, yes. <laughs> yeah, it, it was ridiculous. Just want to say it happens among women too. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. We we are we yeah uh, we are all equal. <laughs> Unfortunately. Okay. So uh so one more before we uh we finish the, here. Uh seven fifty eight. Can dueling be considered murder on the part of the individual who knowing his own weakness is realistically sure of being killed. Uh, can dueling be considered murder on the part of the individual who knowing his own weakness is realistically sure of be being killed? And logically, the answer is that'll be suicide. And um, we know that this is the case, right? And the letter A, when the chances are equal, are equal, is it murder or suicide? Then logically, both, right? So the the comment from Kardec is uh, in all cases even when the chances are equal dualists are guilty in the first case they are guilty because they make a level head and deliberate attack on the life of a fellow human being in the second they risk their own lives for no reason and without serving any benefit to anyone so it's really not giving the importance of not being aware of the blessing of being alive, right? There you go. Yeah. Before you go, Anna, I'd like to say something. I, I'm sure on behalf of the whole group, I'd like to thank you so much for everything you've done to us here, the opportunity 
of us getting together and from so many places from all over the world. So thank you so much, Anna. You are really, you know, a brilliant Aryan girl that's facing the music. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yes. Thank you, guys. Congratulations, right? Thank, thank you, you so much for this opportunity. It is, um, it is a, it, uh, in reality, I think it is, a, it is very brave for all of us. You know, it's been a year and uh, here we are still eager to learn, still uh, willing to step forward right so we don't want you to, to repeat the same mistakes so yeah mm -hmm. I, uh, I love this group for the bravery of facing our own darkness and still learn from it and uh, overcome it right so um, I think it's um, if there is something to say is congratulations to to everybody but I do love these meetings every Saturdays and the uh, so do we. Um, yeah. So do we. Yeah. Well, thank Anyone you for speak? being here. Annie, please. I love these meetings so much that I'm going to miss you guys. Um, it's too long to wait until January 21st to see everybody. So I'm going to be really sad. I just wanted to say that because I'll miss you We can you keep in touch, Anna. Remember the email whenever you want. People, this is, this is serious. Whenever you need something, because... When you are, when we are in this field as we, as we are now, many times we have problems that other people don't. Mm -hmm. So get in touch with us, right? even privately. Say, please pray for me. Uh, what about this? I have a, a very strong question that is persistent in my mind. It can be a bad influence. Tell to uh, let's get in, united in this and help each other. With no problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very well said, Luis, because. Um... There is something that we, we, we need to, to make sure that you guys understand. We can have meetings, you know, if you like, Louis said, if you have any issue and that you like to discuss or any question, et cetera, we can, we can have them in maybe not on the Saturdays, not video recording, but yeah, we can meet, mm -hmm. you know, between two or three or doesn't matter. We yes. can, we can, we can talk and, and be in touch. Uh, because there is something that is important for us to 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 keep in mind is the the environment that we created. It is our responsibility to to keep you know uh, up, and uh, as we do so, uh, we benefit from it. Uh, um, and uh, that's that's our. Uh, uh, something for us to to remember but uh believe me you are always in my prayers you are always in my heart i do have um some irradiation groups over here in houston and um every time that i do this group is is the very first one in my in my list because um anyway for some reason Maybe God will know, but uh, uh, I'm pretty sure we are not doing this for the first time. We are not meeting for the first time. And possibly it's our uh, commitment to, to learn and evolve together. So I wish you I all. Have, uh, I have some parting remarks, which people may <laughs> find amusing. If we have um, a million years incarnated as a human, and we live, for example, 20 years in each life on average, then we have 50,000 lifetimes. Now, during each lifetime, we are going to make one or more really good friends. <laughs> <laughs> and so this means we have 100,000 really good friends, which, mm -hmm. um, which of course is nonsense because they incarnate too. And we are, um, we are incarnating beside each other at the same time as children, as wives, as father, as parents, whatever. So the number is actually much lower than that. But given a large amount of lifetimes and the length of the human experience, it is wonderful to contemplate how many really good friends that we make. And, mm -hmm. and these good friends are, are numbering in at least the hundreds, if not the thousands, 
Um, so I just wanted to throw that out there because it's a, it's a very um, comforting exactly. piece of knowledge. Those people are, of course, around for us whenever we like. I, I love that. Yeah, I love this. Yeah, exactly. Okay. All right. You all, I wish you Merry Christmas. Merry Happy Christmas, New guys. Year. Happy Christmas, I wish you all. Happy Christmas, everyone. Yeah, wonderful Thank time you, and see you Thank next you year. See you very <laughs> soon. Christmas. Christmas. Happy Christmas. Bye. Merry Christmas. Bye bye. bye. bye.